it's Tom Donald from the London Contemporary School of Piano. And in our last video, we were jamming on Packerbell's Canon. Now we're going to jam on a famous piece by Eric Satie using the same techniques. Let's go back to that D major scale. So playing the scale in a way where we move up and we move down freely in the scale, where we don't play it just in a subscribed way, like this, but where we start in another point of the scale and draw a line with the music. A really powerful way to practice our scales. And we're going to use the famous left hand. Now this is an exercise that takes a little bit of coordination, so this is a bit trickier than the Packerbell's Canon from the previous video. So I'm just letting my left hand settle into these chords. These two chords, by the way, are a G major 7 and a D major 7. So major 7 chords, they, they, they're sort of on a holiday. They're lying on the beach somewhere in some warm country. They're not really going anywhere. And particularly in this key of D major. So now I'm going to improvise in the right hand. Now because this is, from a coordination viewpoint, a bit tricky, I'm going to keep my right hand really simple to start with, just three notes at a time. And if you find this really hard, perhaps do this as a duet with a friend. So have someone to play the bass part and you to improvise and then you switch over. It can be really fun. So I'm just going to start with three notes at a time. You can see my left hand slips there. And this happens because one hand is improvising and the other isn't improvising. So the key is just to keep going, to roll with the punches. It's not about being perfect, it's about just rolling with it. started to expand after a while. I started just with three notes at a time and then I started trying some more complicated techniques such as tremolos, shaking notes, faster scale runs. But it's really important to start with a simple seed, just the three notes up or three notes down. It's a really good place to start. And then building it from there, maybe four notes up. Four notes down, maybe a trill. You can try all of these different techniques and see what it does to the music. Now, I know this left hand may be a little bit difficult for some of you, so a nice uh, alternative way to play it might be just to play the chords. And you do this in the left hand. And that just might free you up to try a few more things in the right hand. Let's just 
just important to give the music lots of space. Don't try and do too many things. You don't get more points for playing more notes. Even if you look at the original theme of this piece, it's not a busy theme. Right, that, and see, this is why improvisation is so important. It gives you a snapshot into the composer's mind. You go back to the original theme and you think, oh, this is what the composer did. The composer used these notes in the scale to these types of rhythms. Maybe I could use different rhythms in the same notes. Or I could do the opposite. I could use the same rhythm, um, oh, sorry, the same notes, but a different rhythm. things you can try with the music. See what you can do with that. I have put together a special improvisation PDF summary and chord cheat sheet of these tips and tricks for those of you who wish to improve your creative piano playing. To receive your download, you can visit contemporaryschoolofpiano.com and ask us for the Stingray Music Series Pack and we will send you the material with our compliments.